Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's a joy to be in the Lord's house. David says, I was glad. I was glad entering and praising the Lord in his courts. And so it's a joy to see you all in worship this morning. We welcome you to our first Sunday of the month which is Sacrament Sunday. We pray and trust that the Lord will prepare our hearts as we commune with him this morning. Receive these words from Psalm 138. I give you thanks, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods I sing your praise. I bow down toward your holy temple. And I give thanks to your name for your steadfast love and your faithfulness. For you have exalted above all things your name and your word. So we are here to praise the name of the Lord. Let us pray together. Loving Father, we thank you so much for inviting us into your presence. We are here because you have allowed us you called us, you brought us here. And so Father, we ask that you will fill our hearts with joy, fill our hearts with your presence, renew our walk with you, refine us so that we will be your servants now and forevermore. And together, all God's people say, Amen. We continue with worship through songs. Please stand if you are able.
July the 2nd, 247 years ago, was the actual date that the U.S. Declaration of Independence was approved. We celebrate the holiday on July 4th because that's when the document was dated. But the document wasn't actually signed until August the 2nd. Today we're celebrating the sacrament of the Lord's Supper. If you're part of our YouTube congregation, this would be a good time to prepare your elements of bread and juice for later in worship. If you're here in the sanctuary, please join us for coffee and fellowship in the cafe immediately after worship. We have a challenge for first fruits for July. Let's fill the trunk out by the front door every week with food that we will take to the Frederick Food Bank. The Monday Fellowship and Bible Study meets tomorrow evening, July the 3rd at 7 p.m. The Virtual Prayer Ministry meets via Zoom Tuesdays at noon. 
Please speak with Pastor Isaiah if you would like to join. The men's Bible study is on a summer break and will resume in the fall. The women will meet on Thursday evening, July the 20th at 7 p.m. Especially for our YouTube congregation, we welcome your contributions to Monocacy Valley Church via tithe.ly, our online giving app. Once you sign up, it's very easy to give and you can give safely and securely. And now let's return to worship as we receive our tithes and offerings. Children's time. Sit, sit here. Mm -hmm. Good morning. Micah, can you sit here, please? Thank you. Hey, we have our friends joining us today. I know them. I know them. You don't know them, but I know them. You know that? So, good morning, friends. How are you? Good. You are good. You are good. I'm glad. Remind us your name. You are? Damien. Damien. And you are? 
So thank you for joining us for worship today. It's good to come to church with grandpa, grandma, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. So today we celebrate God's love. We celebrate God's love. And John chapter 15, verse 12, Jesus says, this is a new command I give you. Love one another as I have loved you. Loved one another, love one another as I have loved you. Yes. So love is kind. Be kind to one another. Love one another as I have loved you. So what, what are some of the ways that we can show people that we love them? Rebecca, do you know? Yeah, pray for them. Give them a hug like you do. What else? Share with them. Yes, bless you. Share with them. So continue to, we pray and ask that the Lord will give us the grace to share his love. Pray for people. Love them. Share with them. Be friendly. Be kind. Would you please reach forth your hands as a sign of blessing on our children? Let us pray. Loving God, continue to bless and nurture faith in our young ones who are the church of tomorrow. We ask that your grace will hold them firmly in your covenant love. Bless them. Bless our worship as well. In Jesus' name we pray and together all God's people say amen. Amen. You may continue with worship. Yes, you can come. <laughs> For our scripture reading this morning, I invite you to turn to the Gospel of John, chapter 7. The Gospel of John, chapter 7, verse 37 through 39. I read. On the last day of the feast, the great day, Jesus stood up and cried out, If anyone thirst, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Now this is said about the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were to receive. For as yet the Spirit had not been given, but Jesus was not yet glorified, because Jesus was not yet glorified. Let us pray together. Loving God in heaven, we thank you so much for your love towards us. You send your son, Jesus Christ, who is our salvation. We thank you for caring for us, laying down your life for us, for the miracle of redemption. We are here to celebrate you, to celebrate your love. We thank you so much for your word given to us to nourish us, And on this first Sunday of the month, as we commune with you through word and spirit, Lord, we ask that you renew our commitment. Refresh your anointing on us so that we will remain beacons of light to the whole world. Loving Father, as we meet here freely, we think of those who lack some of the basic liberties that we experience here. The freedom to worship, the freedom to move, to travel, to live, And our hearts are drawn to those who suffer. 
persecution because of your name. Wherever they are, Lord, you know. Would you please surround them with your love and release the tension and the pain they experience every day. Lord, we also ask that you will please remove diseases and sickness away from us. Even in our community, there are many who are suffering from various forms of cancer, diseases, and sicknesses. Lord, be closer to them. Some of them, some of the names are listed in our bulletin, and you know them because they are your children. You made them in your image, and we trust that you can recreate them in the power of your Holy Spirit. You are the agent and author of new creation, so recreate them and heal their sicknesses and diseases. We think of those who face injustice, the injustice of war. Children, women who are not safe, Places where children cannot be children because of war. From Russia to Ukraine to Central Africa and other parts of the world. Would you please spread freedom? Would you please spread peace all over the world and remove hurt, hatred? Father, we pray for your church. Renew your church. Unite us. Help us to be the guiding light, the light of the world. Father, we pray that your Holy Spirit will help us understand this scripture. So illumine it for us, we pray. We ask all this with thanksgiving through Christ our Lord. And together, all God's people say, Amen. Amen. As a church, we have been looking at the Holy Spirit. Who is He? This morning, I would like us to reflect on another essential element of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a gift, He is a gift. Is there anything that is free? Is there anything that is free? We live in a world and culture where you must pay for everything, isn't it? Even at your home, from garbage to everything, we pay for it. Some people have tried or try to be debt free, but it's almost impossible to be debt free. I had a conversation with someone who told me that well, his house is paid for, but he quickly acknowledged that property tax every year, which is high. So he thinks it's not debt free after all. So he has to pay tax for living in his own house. So is there anything that is free? Well, few things in life might be free. Few things in life might be free. Sometimes we receive gifts like this watch. It's a gift. My family gave me June 2022 during my birthday. They knew I needed a new watch. The previous one lasted 14 years and it was dying. Sometimes I will have to reset it, adjust it every morning, but it worked for me. But they thought I needed one and I received it with joy and gladness. I know I don't deserve this. Did not work for it. My family put their toes together, planned it, bought it for me with their funds, meaning a gift is free, it's free. Without merit, without qualification, 
The Holy Spirit is a gift to us all, but more so to a believer in Jesus Christ, to a follower of Jesus Christ. It is obvious that no one can purchase the power of the Holy Spirit, no number of efforts, status, religious practice can earn us the, Holy, the, the gift of the Holy Spirit. No good deed, none, is capable of earning us the presence of the Holy Spirit. He is a gift. He is a gift. It's a free gift to all people. And Jesus Christ has made this gift available to all people. He worked for it. He paid a price. And inviting us all, would you please take this gift from me? The passage we read this morning is very clear about this. Jesus Christ made this declaration during the closing assembly of the Feast of Tabernacle. This feast lasted seven days. Seven days. It was a very important feast. It's among the great three feasts. The great three feasts that every adult male was required to attend, just like Pentecost and Passover. The Feast of Tabernacle is also among the seven feasts of the Hebrews. The Feast of Tabernacle started with a solemn assembly the first day where nobody was allowed to work. It was a solemn assembly. And lasted for seven days. The feast commemorated the 40 years of wandering in the desert, the journey from Egypt to the promised land when the Israelites lived in tents or temporary shelter. So they reminded, they remember that every year, every year. But it also reminded them of God's gift of food, shelter, protection from their enemies, animals, and nature during those 40 years. So, and the Feast of Tabernacle also marked the end of the agricultural year, harvest year, which started with the harvest of grapes, figs, or, um, pomegranates, olives, honey, wheat, and then barley. If you read Deuteronomy chapter 8, Bali festival or harvest signify the end of the agricultural year. So it was a joyful, the Feast of Tabernacle was a joyful assembly. It was an occasion where they thanked God for a good harvest. And so on the last day of the feast was often considered as the last day that people gave their offerings they offered offerings to the Lord in anticipation of the beginning of another harvest or planting year and anticipation of another feast of the tabernacle. It was on this last day that Jesus Christ turned the attention of the audience of this great feast to himself. He said in a loud voice, if anyone thirst, if anyone thirst, let him come to me. Let him come to me and drink. But why this cry? Jesus stood up and cried out. Why this cry? It was a plea. The plea turned the attention to the most important thing. It's not the harvest, not the food, not the food. Jesus Christ turned their attention to himself. The Apostle John, he has a clever way of introducing concepts. He turned the people's attention to Jesus Christ as the tabernacle. What is tabernacle? God's presence. Then if you go back to John chapter 1, verse 14, he talks about what? The word became flesh and dwelt among us. So Jesus is the tabernacle. He is the tabernacle. 
So the concept of tabernacle and God in human flesh are the same in God in John's gospel. Also, there was a reminder and teaching that the ceremonies of the Feast of Tabernacle were met, were temporary. They will vanish. And this is the last day where you are going home. What would you do? You have to wait until one more year. But here is a living tabernacle. In John's Gospel also, starting at chapter 4, Jesus Christ already told that he is the living water. Water that is everlasting. At the end of the feast, you will return home and have to wait one more year for another feast. But then, the Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ as the tabernacle, will dwell with you, will dwell among you, will dwell in your hearts. So Christ offered them something that was permanent, something that they could enjoy anywhere, anytime. Hence, the announcement, the announcement that he is the tabernacle. If you look at John chapter 7, verse 30, uh, 37, it says, if anyone thirst, let him come to me and drink. Jesus had in view Isaiah 55. If you look at Isaiah 55, verse 1 through 2, the word says, Come, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And he who has no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk. Without money and without price, how can we buy without money? Everything is already made available. It's free. Verse 2 of Isaiah 55. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen diligently to me and eat what is good and delight yourselves in rich food, pointing to the feast Christ himself offered. Come, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters and he who has no money Come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. So in essence, Jesus Christ was echoing these words, echoing these words. I've made everything available for you. Come to the table. It's prepared for you. This is the Lord's table. It's God's table. The Lord's table prepared by his blood, body and blood. It's a free gift to us all. As we mentioned earlier, no one can buy this gift. No one, no amount of money can buy this gift. It is free. No need to travel to Jerusalem year after year. We don't have to. Even in our time, we don't have to travel to Jerusalem. We see it's made available. Many of us may not afford plane ticket to Jerusalem. It's made available for us here. We need not to travel, but enjoy it in the comfort of your home. Enjoy it anywhere. It's something that the rich and the poor can afford. Anyone by faith can receive it. If you look at verse 38, he says, Whoever believes in me, whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. And this refers to John, back to Jesus' teaching in John chapter 4, verse 10. Speaking to the Samaritan woman, Christ said, If you knew the gift of God, and who is he that is saying to you, Give me the drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The gift. The concept of gift is there in John 4.10. And also the notion of living water. Living water is symbolic of the presence of the Holy Spirit in the life of believers, welling in us all the time, welling in us, generating the power we need to live for Christ. Grace is a gift of God, according to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 7 through 9. We are saved by grace not by anything. Same with the Holy Spirit given to us. The Holy Spirit dwells in us, producing life that flows in and out of Christ. We flow into Christ and flow out of Christ to live and serve. 
and be who we are made to be in God's image. You see the great waters, the Atlantic, the Pacific, the Indian Ocean, and all the waters, see how they are connected. Symbolic of what the work of the Holy Spirit in the life of a believer illustrates that perfectly. Connection, connection, connection. And we are called, invited to receive that gift. Invited to receive that gift. I don't know how some of these things make their ways into, or their way into even our bulletin. I was looking at this, I was surprised that Isaiah and Salome celebrated their 15th anniversary. <laughs> but I think about it, I recall one year prayer to our wedding. The day I proposed to my wife, I knew that day was coming. I prepared for it. Then the day came. I remember going on my knee, pretending to be a nice person. One year, I heard a ring. I don't know, I don't recall everything I said. I heard the ring, I was looking at her. All I wanted her to say was to accept the ring. I knew, I would say I was 99% sure that she will accept the ring. But somehow, my mind was racing. Will she accept this ring? Will she accept this ring? Will she accept this ring? And, you know, when you are lawyers, they take their time. (laughs) They take their time. They read the fine print. Why I was still on my knee with hoping that she would accept this ring. She did. But those five seconds, ten seconds or a minute before she accepted my ring were the most Yeah, you know, the Holy Spirit, would you please accept this gift? Would you please accept this gift? Will you please accept this gift? This is the cry every day, every day, every day, every day. If you read Revelation chapter 22, verse 17, which is the last chapter in the Bible, Christ made the same invitation. He said, the spirit and the bride say, come. And let the one who hears say, come. And let the one who thirsts come. Let the one who desires take the water of living water without price. The Holy Spirit is still inviting, calling, 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 pleading. Would you please accept my offer? It's a free gift. But the Spirit is pleading, Christ is pleading with us every day. Friends in the Lord, we are invited to see the heart of Christ for the world. The heart of Christ for the broken world. Every day, he is calling, every minute he is calling, every second he is calling, inviting us. That call is due as we uh, as we. Uh, uh, as we heard last week. First of all, as believers, come and be renewed. That is the call. Come and be renewed. And then those who are yet to put their faith in Christ. That's why in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 22, that verse says, and who has also put his seal on us and given us his spirit in our hearts as a guarantee That is, as a believer, you are not a Christian yet. You are not a follower of Christ yet unless you are stamped with the seal that is the Holy Spirit affirms and confirms our salvation and guarantees our salvation as he walks with us every day. Christ stamps his presence on us through the Holy Spirit. See, Christ offers us his dwelling 
with us in the person of the Holy Spirit. And so he still cries to us to come, especially those who are yet to have faith in Christ. And those who are weak, those who are tired, calling on us. So the most important thing in this life is free. And that guarantees us life eternal with God. Free, free, free. Friends in the Lord, would you receive this gift without price? We can receive this gift by faith. By faith, invite the Holy Spirit into your life, into your heart. By faith. By faith, activate his presence in your life for believers. By faith, cry out to the Holy Spirit to renew you in him, even as we partake the Lord's Supper, which is a gift of grace to us. Let us pray. Loving God, we ask that you will renew and renew us according to your grace, according to your mercy. Remove any hindrance from us and invite us to offer ourselves to you in faith, believing that you will take us, mold us according to your riches in glory. Prepare our hearts even as we commune with you and unite us with the saints worldwide who are praising you day and night as well as the saints in heaven. Together, let us worship in truth and in spirit. In your name we pray and together all God's people say, Amen. Amen. At this time, I invite you to the liturgy of the Lord's Supper. I invite you to join me as we prepare our hearts and partake the Lord's Supper. Friends in the Lord, come to the feast of the people of God. We come from the far east and from the west, from the north. north. Friends in the Lord, the Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and fitting to give thanks. It is our joy and salvation at all times and in all to praise you. Amen. Friends in the Lord, please listen to the words of institution. The Lord Jesus Christ, on the night that he was betrayed, he took bread and broke it after giving thanks and said, take it. This is my body which is given to you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, in the same manner, he took the cup and said, this is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink in remembrance of me. Friends in the Lord, let's dedicate this element let us proclaim the mystery of Christ. His death, O oh God, we proclaim. His resurrection, we declare. His coming, we await. Glory be to God. Glory be to you, O oh Lord. Let us pray together. Most merciful God and Father, give your Holy Spirit in the breaking of the bread so that we may be joined to Christ the Lord receive new life and remain his glad and faithful servants until we feast with him in glory. 
And as this grain has been gathered from many fields into one loaf, and this grain from many hills into one cup, so gather your people together from the ends of the earth into your kingdom. At this time, I invite you to offer a silent prayer. Thank you for accepting us and for answering our prayers. We pray this in the name of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. At this time, I invite you to come forward and take the elements, return back to your seat, and we shall partake them together. Friends in the Lord, the gift of Christ to his church. People of God, the bread we break is our communion with the body of Jesus Christ. Take, eat, and remember that Christ's body was broken for the forgiveness of our sins. The cup of blessings that we share is our communion with the blood of Jesus Christ. Take, 
drink and remember that Christ's body, I mean, blood, blood was shed on the cross of Calvary for the forgiveness of our sins. Let us give thanks. Since the Lord has now fed us at his table, let us praise God's holy name with heartfelt thanksgiving. Bless the Lord, all my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, all my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your iniquity? Who heals all your diseases? Who redeems your life from the pit? Who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy? The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. He does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his steadfast love towards those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far he removes our transgression from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion for those who fear him who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, and we also give us all things with him. Therefore shall my mouth and heart show forth the praise of the Lord from this time forth and evermore. Amen. Amen. Let us stand for our closing song.
promise your buried body began to breathe out of the silence the roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on you again then came the morning and sealed the promise your buried body began to breathe out of the silence the roaring lion declared the grave claim on me. Yes, Jesus, yours is the victory. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah. Death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. Salvation in your name, Jesus Christ, my living hope. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the one who set me free. Receive God's parting blessings and return home in peace and have a happy July 4th. The grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. And together, all God's people say, Amen, Amen. Go home in peace. Yeah.